I'm going to show you a game which seems difficult, but if you learn one simple trick, and I'm serious, it's genuinely this one simple trick, the game becomes so easy, most people can be beaten by a piece of plastic from the 60s. Here's the game of Dr. Nim I managed to find and buy online. It came in a fantastic original 1960s box. Check that out. You can tell us 1960s America because there's a wholesome family having fun with guns in the background. The game starts with a row of marbles along the top of the board there, and the goal is to take the last marble. Whoever gets that one there wins the game. And each time you have a go, you can choose to take one, two, or three marbles. But who am I going to play against? Well, for Dr. Nim, you play the piece of plastic itself. There are levers and things that toggle and bars underneath. It will make its own moves, and in theory, it will always beat me. As the human eye get the luxury of going first, there's a little toggle down here. If it's on the left, it means it's Dr. Nim's go. If it's on the right, it's my go as the human. And whenever I want to release a ball, I just hit the button on the side there. There goes the first one. And you know what, I'm going to do two marbles on my first go. So now I move the lever over to Dr. Nim's side, and to set Dr. Nim going, you hit the button once, and it will choose how many marbles it wants to take. So here we go. It's gone for one. Oh wait, it's gone for a second one. Oh, so it took two marbles, and then moved the lever back over to indicate it's now my go. Well, I only want one, so there's my one, and it's made it through. Every so often it gets stuck. I now go, fine, Dr. Nim, all yours. I took one, what are you gonna do? It's gone for one, it's gone for a second one, it's gone for a third one, and then switched it back to my go. Okay, there are four left. I think Dr. Nim may have me in a corner here. I'm gonna take, oh goodness, I'll go with two again. There's, actually, you know what, just one. I'm gonna do one, straight back to Dr. Nim. And you're on, Dr. Nim. One second one, and the winning third one, and just to rub it in, as it wins, it puts the lever back over to say it's now my go to suck. No matter how many times you play Dr. Nim, the plastic jerk, as long as the human goes first, as long as you play by all the rules and don't cheat, it will beat you every single time. This is based on a mathematical game called, unsurprisingly, Nim. And this is a plastic computer that has been built to beat any human in a simplified version of Nim. Nim is a great game to play if, like this piece of plastic, you're a big fan of beating other people. And I'm going to teach you how to always win at Nim so you can use it to annoy your friends and family. The game of Nim has been known about and studied by mathematicians for well over a century, although people believe it predates that by a long way. Specifically, what we're looking at here is a version of Nim called Single Pile Nim. For Dr. Nim, all the marbles came off one row. The version I'm going to show you all these coins will be in a single line. Technically, proper Nim can have more than one pile. But believe me, the strategies for multi-pile Nim get a lot more complicated. It is very much another game for another video. The way I would normally play Nim in a bar or similar setting against friends, strangers, you know, chumps, would be to use something like 12 coins. We start from one end, each player can take one, two, or three coins. Whoever takes the last coin wins. While I absolutely never encourage any form of gambling, if you were the kind of person who would like to do that, you and your opponent can both put some money on the game, put it under the last coin or token, and whoever takes that one gets the cash. In a similar vein, many years ago I was involved in setting up something called Maths Busking, where we went outside and did busking with mathematics on the street. One of the routines involved putting 12 pegs on one of our buskers. The 12th peg had 20 pounds underneath it. Very importantly, 20 pounds of our money. But we knew if we played the correct strategy, we would always be able to win the game and keep our money. Some people found that pretty annoying. They would go away, come up with strategies, come back, try and beat us. And in fact, there are a few ways people can try and get you in a corner where you can no longer win. But I'll get to that in a moment. To start with, here's how you win 12 coin Nim. 
A nice way to start is by looking at the end game I got myself in before with Dr. Nim. I had four marbles left, or in this case, four coins. It was my go, and I knew I couldn't possibly win. And if you get your opponent in this situation, you can always win, because if they take one, you take three. If they take two, you take two. They take three, you take one, and they can't take four according to the rules. So the goal of the game is to get them into this situation. But how do you guarantee that situation? Well, imagine it's earlier in the game and there are eight remaining and it's their go. You've got the same deal going on with just these four to leave these four left. If they take one, you take three. They take two, you take two. They take three, you take one. As long as between them and you, you take four away, you'll be left in that end game. We can now go one step back to the very beginning of the game where there are 12 coins all together. You're thinking of them in lots of four. Four there, four there, four at the end. For each round of four, the other person goes first, you go second. You need to make sure you take enough coins after their go, so between you, you've taken four in total. Once you know what's going on, it's a very straightforward game to win. They take one, you take three. They take two, you take two. They realize they can't win, they get annoyed, you get the money. The only problem arises when people realize the trick themselves, and this is what we had when we were busking. People would go away, work it out, come back, and then they would insist that we go first instead of them. So what you do is if any of your friends cotton on to what you're doing, the next time you reset it, you do what we used to do. You just take out out an extra coin and put it on the end. We would subtly increase the number of pegs to be greater than 12. You go first and you bring it down to the now multiple of four. It's their go and you're right back in your winning situation. So how does Dr. Nim, the piece of plastic, play by those rules? Well, at the top we have the 12 marbles, as we would expect, and then underneath that we have a series of these little toggling plastic levers. They keep track of how many marbles have gone through the game so far, and you can think of them as kind of like a binary counter, but it's not true binary, it's more of a tally system that keeps track of the marbles. You start with the leftmost one up and the other two flat down. The first marble release drops the left one but raises the center one. If I then send down a second one, it drops the center one, raises the right one. The third marble just restores the right one to being flat. Only when there's a fourth marble does the leftmost one get raised back up again and we're right back to where we started. That repeats every set of four marbles. After they've gotten through what I'm now calling the paddles, the marbles can go one of two different ways. They can either go to the left or they can go to the right. If it's Dr. Nim's turn and the switch is over on their side, any marbles which go to the left will bump the switch over, ending Dr. Nim's go. Any marbles which go to the right hit the button and release another marble. So we need to see from the different arrangements of the top three paddles as it keeps track from each set of four, if it's the first, second, third or fourth ball, do they cause Dr. Nim's go to end or do they cause them to take another marble? Well, let's have a look. I'll just cycle through a few marbles and we'll keep track. First marble out ends Dr. Nim's go. Second marble, he'll take another ball. Third marble, take another ball. Fourth marble, ends the go. And it carries on like that. First one will end his go on the left. Second one goes to the right, take another one. Third one goes to the right, take another one. Fourth one goes to the left ending their go. So what does this mean for Dr. Nim's strategy? Well, you can imagine all 12 marbles at the beginning, whoops, in their groups of four, and for each one, if Dr. Nim gets a go on the first or fourth marble, they're gonna call their go to an end. If they get to have a go on the second or third, they're always gonna carry on to another one. When I first got the game and I was investigating how it works, I actually found that a little bit odd because Dr. Nim doesn't have to end their go on the first marble. In theory, the human is always going to have the first marble from each set of four. Why is it designed to go to the left? Is it just easier to build that way? 
It turns out if you read the admittedly casually racist instruction manual, you'll see there are actually all different ways of playing Dr. Nim. There are options for Dr. Nim to go first, and you can do the same trick. You can give them extra marbles that Dr. Nim will just take straight away. And there are other versions where you have a fighting chance. There are some versions of this game where you can actually beat Dr. Nim, and that's what this little paddle here is for. It's called the equalizer paddle, and you can set that so initially Dr. Nim doesn't play with perfect strategy. You get a chance at the beginning to beat it. But if you make one mistake, it will take over, return to perfect play, and you're not gonna win. And that's why Dr. Nim has to end its go on the first position as well as the fourth position. If it only ended in the fourth position, there are some versions of the game where you may have ended at a whole round of four. In that case, Dr. Nim would take four marbles, that's against the rules, and it will have cheated. And whoever designed the Dr. Nim game, to their credit, they made it in such a way that it will never cheat. It will always play within the rules, admittedly, in such a way that it would normally kick your ass. So there you are, that is the game of Dr. Nim. I find it absolutely fascinating as an example of a very early computing-based game. The instructions for all their drawbacks do go into a surprising amount of detail of the theory behind how Dr. Nim actually plays. So you can see here, there's a whole section next to that fantastic caricature which talks all about whether or not machines can actually think. If you like this kind of real world, ridiculous physical computing, then you're gonna love my Domino computer. Check it out, 10,000 dominoes arranged in a pattern such that they can do binary arithmetic. If you like this general concept of fascinating mathematics, of course, make sure you've subscribed to my Stand Up Maths channel. And if you like winning drinks, money, or just admiration off your friends, please do learn how to play Nim, and please do go beat them.